It is my favorite time of the year, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the Royal Rumble. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If somebody walked in here right now with a gun and put it to my head and said, Simon, choose WrestleMania or choose the Royal Rumble. First of all, I'd probably wet my bands because I'd be so scared. And then I'd go, it's not even a choice, my friend. I'd pick the Royal Rumble. It's just more fun. I love the format. It has never aged. And hell, I hope it outlives me. I hope I'm dead in the box and the Royal Rumble is still going. We took a very dark turn. But there is one last thing to do before we get to the pay-per-view, and that is go through every single match until WWE announces more from nowhere, which they're prone to do these days, but predict what is going to happen, and then come Monday, see if we are wrestling geniuses or see if we are wrestling idiots. My name is Simon Miller. This is What Culture Wrestling. Let's predict WWE's 2020 Royal Rumble. We will start with the match I know you are more excited about than any other, and it is of course Shorty G, also known as Chad Gable, taking on the returning Sheamus. And while that was a little bit of a joke, a few little punches there to the ribs of that fight, I actually am quite intrigued, because I think Sheamus is vastly underrated, and no matter what you think about the Shorty G character, I know he sounds like a biscuit, but he is incredible in that ring. I think these two are going to have some good chemistry. Now, a lot like a lot of matches on this show, my big worry is what is actually going to win out? Because I have head predictions and I have heart predictions. When I look at this, I'm like, Sheamus doesn't need to win. I know he's only just come back, but he's got a legacy. He's pretty much a legend by this point. Whereas if Shorty G got the victory, and that does rhyme, somebody pay me $10, all of a sudden you may start looking at him and going, huh, maybe this is something serious I can buy into and that World Wrestling Entertainment is going to give him a proper push. But again, this is in my heart that I'm thinking this. In my head, I'm like, well, Seamus is what? 6'4", he's all big, he's all jacked, he's coming back all lean. And again, he's been away for so long, he's probably going to boot Shorty G in the head and get the one, two, three. Although with that said, that will be okay as long as it's the start of the program. And maybe we take it all the way to WrestleMania and that is where the digestive gets the win. So if we do do that, it's okay. But in terms of this video for this format, yes, I believe Sheamus will walk away with his hand raised. And even then, I think I'm going to be all right with it. Like I say, really do like Sheamus. Don't know why, just something about him that makes me smile. And we're also going to get the returning Humberto Carrillo taking on Andrade for the US Championship. And this one scares me a little bit too and kind of ties into everything we just talked about. But again, we haven't seen Carrillo on television for what, three, four, five, six weeks ever since Mr. Tranquilo whooped his ass. But I don't want to see a title change here. Now is not the time to do it. Andrade finally feels like he's climbing up the ladder as well. Don't drag him back down. But of course, the issue there is that Humberto probably needs a win as well because that character, well, he's not really clicking. If he loses again, I mean, my word, go through his win-loss record. It's like lose, 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 lose. Oh, shock win with the most devastating move in all of professional wrestling. Surprise roll up. Lose, 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 lose. Get head thrown into concrete. But given that Andrade just beat Ray Flippy Mysterio in a damn good ladder match, I don't think you want to go off the rails here. Unless, of course, you're going to have Ray Mysterio run down and cause the distraction then we have to have a big old discussion and a big old chat about heels and baby faces in 2019 and what does it mean to be a good guy and what does it mean to be a bad guy and I just don't care. So let's just have Andrade win, have Zelina Vega screw over Humberto Creo. I mean WWE loves that finish more than I love pizza and then like I say, take him to the top. He's really, really good. Lacey Evans is also going to be taking on Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And if you do join me every week for ups and downs for SmackDown, you know I'm struggling to get into this because I don't really hate Bailey as a heel and I don't understand why Lacey Evans is now a face just because she's a mum and she's in the military. I know lots of mums that are in the military and some I like and some I don't like. I'm gonna tell you the truth now. I don't know one mum that is in the military who's just trying to make a point. Which begs the question, what is the right thing to do here? I mean, you could have Sasha Banks come down and do a bit of interfering and that allows Bailey to win. But if we also do that with Zelina Vega in the Andrade match, we will be running that end sequence into the ground. And then I get mad and then I have to give it a down and everyone moans at me in the comments and I'd rather stay away from that. But, you know, also at that point, do you really want to see Lacey Evans as your SmackDown Women's Champion right now? Does it feel like the right moment to pull that trigger? 
I'm not so sure it does. On top of that, there are rumors that the plan for WrestleMania 36, and obviously cards subject to change, is that WWE actually wants to do Bailey versus Sasha Banks for the championship at WrestleMania. And that's actually a match I'm far more interested in. So I am going to say that Bailey walks away with here with her championship. And as for Lacey Evans, just please let her come out on SmackDown and just give me something, give me anything about why she is a good person. I don't like going on about this because people get so mad at me. And like I say, if you are well into Lacey Evans, you get two thumbs up. I'm glad this is working for you. It just hasn't worked for me. And I bet Sasha Banks does get involved here. And I bet we also see these three ladies in the Royal Rumble where we will come up with something that allows this feud to continue going with Bales and her new haircut. The Universal title is also on the line and bizarrely, it's a strap match as Daniel Braun, as I have written down down there, stupid autocorrect, Daniel Bryan is going to take on The Fiend. I'm still waiting for my letter or my emails to come through from WWE where they explain to me why we are doing a strap match. But hey, look, it's a stipulation. It's different to what they did at Survivor Series or whenever the hell they felt before. Let's see what we come up with. As much as I love Daniel Bryan, if you've had your eyes on social media this week, you may have seen a few quotes going from a recent interview that he did. He's just the best person ever. No wonder everyone loves him so much. I do not think that The Fiend, or Bray Wyatt, is going to lose his championship at this time because I believe he is going to go all the way on to WrestleMania where the victor of the Raw Rumble will take away his title. I can't talk about that right now because I'm saving the Royal Rumble matches to the end because I'm building it like a wrestling card. So really it all comes down to what they are going to do with this strap. And yes, it is going to stop The Fiend from running into his hole, which was the justification that Daniel gave us. But I don't really get what kind of finish you can come up with here. Maybe Daniel Bryan gets wrapped up in the strap and The Fiend's choking him and the ref's like, oh no, it's like hell in a cell over again. Stop the match, stop the match. And you get out of it that way. Or maybe The Fiend does somehow vanish. And then Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt comes down and he's not strapped. So he uses a chair and just plows it into Daniel Bryan's face. I'm not going to lie, this match has me a little bit confused. I'm 99% sure The Fiend is going to win, but I don't really get how the structure of it is going to come together. I mean, I don't mind a strap match. It just feels so random. So you tell me, I'll open up the doors for you. The comments are right down there. How are we going to use this strap? in order to ensure that Bray Wyatt walks away with his new beloved best friend. I'm actually at a loss for this one, which is good in one way. It means WWE has tricked me and they've got me on the ropes. And when I do sit down to watch it, I'm going to go, OK, well, here we go. I don't know which journey to expect. Also slightly terrified. But with all that said, yes, Bray Wyatt, he gets the tick. The stipulations keep on falling out of WWE's ass because we are getting Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin in a Falls Count Anywhere match. And Roman Reigns is going to win this. I mean, I also have Roman Reigns to win something else, but I'm going to hold it and talk later, which does mean maybe WWE pulls a fast one, but I don't believe that. I think we have re-entered Roman being superhero big dog guy, which means he's got to eat Baron Corbin alive, which makes sense, because again, he is a mutt. Roman Reigns is going to get the win. And that's all I've got, really. I think it'll actually be quite fun. The Raw Rumble's coming from a baseball stadium, so these two can brawl all over it and probably find some crazy places in the environment to do some stupid spots that make you go, what are we doing? I thought wrestling was fake. And also, I'd like that to be the end of the feud. I'm a bit bored of Baron Corbin versus Roman Reigns. I do respect the fact that WWE's built this and this long-term storytelling. We've got week to week to week, and there's a thread that flies through the whole thing. It doesn't mean I want to see it anymore. Roman Reigns, give him the Superman punch, give him the spear, probably off like some kind of, I don't know, barricade or something crazy like that, and put this to bed, please. And we're also going to get Becky Lynch versus Asuka for the Raw Women's title, and I'm just going to take everything I've been saying on ups and downs and throw it in here, but again, it becomes heart versus head again. I've got that the wrong way around. What's wrong with me? Because this is what I want to happen, right? As a fan, as someone that loves storytelling, I would like Oscar to beat Becky Lynch here, become the Raw Women's Champion, and then we can tell the tale of Becky actually having a proper crisis of confidence where she like, this was the only woman I couldn't beat, and I failed to beat her again. What the hell do I do now? Unfortunately, you are going to have to wait for me to explain how I'd like to see that pay off, because it does tie into the Women's Raw Rumble, 
which we were talking about in around about two minutes time. But to me, that's just so much more interesting than, oh, Becky had an obstacle in a way, and oh, Becky just got over that obstacle. I mean, and again, I don't think that WWE is actually going to do this. Again, here comes the head, it's all activated, and I imagine that Becky Lynch beats Oscar, she celebrates, woohoo, wah hey, and then we start building to whatever her WrestleMania match is going to be. But again, if we're talking about Shakespearean stories, the original one is better than that, but I'm still going for Becky Lynch. But I'm going to talk about this more in a second. All right, so let us book the men's Raw Rumble, I suppose. And again, I'm going to give you Fantasyland, and I'm going to give you Realistic Land. But in Realistic Land, I just think Roman Reigns is going to win. Like, too many times I have second-guessed WWE. Like, you can see what they're going to do, but you go, ha that's why they're not going to do it. And then they just end up doing it. So I'm not going to fall for it again. So my official pick is Roman Reigns, and because everybody always wants the final four, I'm going to go Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, Keith Lee, and, I don't know, Seth Rollins. There you go, I've thrown him out there. However, in La La Land, this is what I want to go down. Brock Lesnar does indeed come out at number one, but number two is none other than The Undertaker, the dead man, the phenom. He comes out here with his big bong dong kind of a thing, and those two brawl, and somehow they tumble over the top rope, which means whoever is number three is now kind of number one because there's nobody else in the ring. This then reignites that feud. We get Brock versus Taker 2 at WrestleMania. Finally, we get the match we didn't get at WrestleMania 30 because nobody gets concussed. Undertaker beats Brock Lesnar, gets his revenge, becomes the WWE Champion, and then he retires, and it's beautiful, and we all cry, and we all just shout, Undertaker, I love you, and I always will. And of course, he comes back again because he loves doing that, but it will be wonderful. Right, so that is a massive long shot and just me being a massive wrestling nerd. But I do think there's a more likely scenario where you replace The Undertaker with Cain Velasquez and we start off that feud again. The only issue we have there is what the hell do you do at WrestleMania 36? Either Brock Lesnar beats him again and you're like, man, Cain, you a chump when it comes to pro wrestling. Or Cain wins and becomes the WWE Champion. And you know what a 2000 wrestling audience is like. They are going to crap over that like they got diarrhea. But I do have another nerd scenario, because do you know who is still being rumoured with a comeback at the Royal Rumble? That's right, it's the rated R superstar, Edge. And I think if he does do that, surely he has to win the thing, because the crowd are going to be so hot and so desperate for that, you should just give it to them. But there is another scenario that doesn't require him to win it at all. Because do you know who needs a third man in their ongoing mini feud? That's right, it's Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens, because the big show got taken out to dinner and we ain't seen him since. And do you know who would benefit from being in six-man tag team matches, given they're coming back from a serious neck injury? That's right, it's Edge. And do you know who would have a pretty good one-on-one -on -one contest with Seth Rollins at WrestleMania with the perfectly viable storyline being, years ago, Seth Rollins tried to re-injure Edge's neck in that skit on Raw that you may have forgotten about but can now be brought back up. Yes, it is Edge. I'm pretty sure I've already said that. So that is my other crazy shout out just in case it does happen and I look like some kind of wrestling savant. Edge comes back. Somehow Seth Rollins and his cronies throw him over the top rope but then Seth Rollins goes out of there as well and at WrestleMania 36 you finally get the ultimate revenge match where Edge does indeed beat Seth Rollins and again, what a marquee thing that will going to be. Seth Rollins versus Edge. It will send the internet wrestling community absolutely bonkers. They'll be like almonds, nuts. And if that does happen, I expect a big barrel of cash just to be left at my door. Because how the hell did I come up with that? But again, in terms of what we're doing here, it's just going to be Roman Reigns. As for the women's, well, I have some crazy thoughts as well. I think it's either going to be Charlotte Flair, Shayna Baszler, or Ronda Rousey if the latter does make a surprise appearance. But deep down in my guts, I don't think that's going to happen. And while I think Shayna would be a worthy winner, that's just not how WWE does business. I do have a sneaking suspicion that it is going to be Shayna Baszler versus Becky Lynch at WrestleMania 36, but there's you know easier ways to get there, I suppose. And you know how much WWE loves Charlotte Flair. They want to add to her 56,422 title reigns. So I do believe she will win the Royal Rumble. I also think the Nia Jax will be involved in the final four, and hell, maybe she could even shock us and win the thing and go on to take on Bailey. That's not what I'm going with officially. When we fantasy book, though, well, if WWE does Batista me and give me what I want, Oscar will have defeated Becky Lynch earlier in the show and taken away her Raw Women's title. Show. I meant to say show then. I'm just so excited. So do you know what could happen? Like a repeat of 2019. Becky Lynch somehow works her way back into the Raw Rumble. Charlotte Flair 
thinks she is going to win it, but she doesn't. Becky Lynch gets rid of her again, and that means when Lynch does defeat Asuka at WrestleMania 36 for that championship, you can go back to Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch based on what happened here and based on what happened in 2019. And although they've already fought like 10,000 times, it doesn't matter. It's still a big match that people want to see. I am one of those people. None of this is going to happen now, and I'm just going to look like a massive geek, but I'm all right with that because I am a massive geek and I just love professional wrestling. So in case you did get a little bit confused in all my fantastical stuff there, Roman Reigns for men and Charlotte Flair for women's, I am ticking the obvious box. But now, look, there is a comment section down there. The most important thing is that you let me know your predictions for the Royal Rumble and also that you come back here if any of my crazy predictions are correct and go, Simon, you are a flipping awesome human being. Please have my child. But don't do that. It's too much. Keep your child. You need to raise them. They're just going to have psychological issues when they grow up because they'll never understand why you gave up your offspring because some bald asshole on the internet managed to randomly guess what is going to happen at a wrestling pay-per-view. And we have gone so far down this tangent, I think we need to get a rope and pull it back in. So please do like the video, share the video, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling. Head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles. This is my why the hell did I just say that face? Then follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE. They will keep you up to date with that wrestling news. And look, you're already here on YouTube. Watch more videos on What Culture Wrestling. Some feature me. But yes, my name is Simon from What Culture. I want to thank you for your time as always. I know you don't have much of it, and I appreciate it. You're giving it to me here as I rant and rave and say crazy things some of which were about babies, but let's just forget about that. Again, rewind. Enjoy the Royal Rumble. It is the best event of the year. And of course, on Monday, 2 p.m. GMT, we will up those downs for that damn show. Also, no, I am not in the Rumble. And yes, I am also a professional wrestler. These are the two questions I've been asked a lot over the last seven days. Simon, are you in the Royal Rumble? No. And then someone goes, wait, what, Simon, why would you be in the Royal Rumble? Are you, do you even wrestle? Yes, I do. That's it. See you soon.